You hope it starts at one. And, and look at that, you've got exactly the same slide. <laughs> but I, I, I put that up there because I was interested in the language, you know, tenacious ideas, killer ideas, tenacious entrepreneurs, all of that. And I, I guess I'm looking at some of those people in the crowd tonight. We're looking at a very, very different world these days. And in a world like that, why do we actually have schools? Now just take a few seconds to think about that. Think about why we actually have these places where we compel people to go for 12 or 13 years of the most formative stage of their life. What's the actual reason? You know, people would say that it's basically so that you can socialise kids, so they learn how to be productive members of a society, that they, they learn how to get on with each other, they learn that there are rules, they learn that, you know, you can't always have it your own way and all of those sorts of things. Other people would say that it's all about being ready for the world of work. It's actually about producing people who know about turning up on time, fitting in, following orders, having basic levels of literacy and numeracy to be part of that big factory model of schooling that has changed. Even here in Newcastle, there are really, really good examples of the fact that the world of work looks very, very different these days. You know, they're just two of the places and there are many more within Newcastle that are actually doing it very, very differently with activity-based workspaces and shared things. Internationally, big startups in San Francisco like Airbnb or when, when lots of the other places are actually looking at their staff as much more of an extended family using social media. And we know that part of the whole ethos behind what happens here in Newcastle has been founded on a lot of people being part of a social media community. And yet we, we think that if we're going to have killer ideas, we've got to emphasise the unique nature of every individual. We talk in education about uniqueness and passion and differentiated instruction and making sure that every learner has the opportunity to do things in ways that matter to them. We emphasise the concept of following your own passion, of being different, of standing out from the pack, of being the person who does something differently. And yet often in society, if we said, well, what makes a good school? And there's a lot of debate about that at the moment. What actually makes a good school? What do you choose as an indicator of choosing what a good school looks like? You know, unfortunately, for lots of people, it still comes back to having lots of kids who look exactly the same, who don't actually emphasise their uniqueness and who actually show that they're willing to be obedient and conform to a set of rules that are actually handed down by others. And in an environment like that, Quite often the only power that people who have little other power in their life have is to do exactly what that little kid is doing. And they're doing it younger and younger and younger. And the smart ones are simply switching off, ignoring the confusing signals and tucking themselves away in a garage or a shed or up late at night or whatever else and becoming the killer people who have got the entrepreneurial ideas that they are now putting up here in front of you. Our schools are not necessarily working on the basis that we can somehow or other plan what people are going to need in 50 years' time, actually make the correct decisions. We don't know what's going to happen in 10 years, let alone the next 50. It's a binary world. And we could get caught in the situation where everything simply becomes the suggestion of very, very complex algorithms, simply using ones and zeros. We've got to be cautious in education that we don't actually let it get to that. We've got to still have people who are human beings within that process who actually disrupt. Just as we talk about disruption in the corporate sector, we've got to actually, within education, be the person who introduces the third possibility, the two, if you like, within that one and zero. Because just like in a fabulous photo taken by an audience member here down at Redhead Beach when the supermoon was up, we still have young people who are curious about the world around them, who are absolutely fascinated by awe and wonder, who are curious about the things that matter to them, and yet so often, because we get very tired as adults, we beat it out of them. When we get the constant why, instead of actually connecting with the idea itself, sometimes it's, shut up, Nathan, it just is. Kids model the behaviour that they see coming from the adults around them. And so therefore, it's got to be a shared role that we actually model the sort of behaviour that we want. We actually model the curiosity. We actually model the fact that it's a shared responsibility for all of us. If we want people who are going to be entrepreneurs who can make the best of every opportunity, then it's a case of all of us working together on that message and telling the policy makers that's what we want. 
They're my Twitter details and that's my mission now that I've redirected what I'm doing with myself for the rest of my life. And uh, I'm hoping that some of you might actually share in part of that journey as well because that's where we will get the people who make such a difference. <laughs> <laughs>